Hello everyone. Today I want to look at the DSP components inside Flowcode. Uh, the DSP components are available for the embedded and the app developer uh, type projects. I'm going to create an embedded project today. Um, so under component libraries, DSP, we have a number of available uh, component libraries to do various to do various things. If I start with something like a waveform generator, I drag on my panel here, and you can see it, it creates a, a component on our panel, and it has a, an out arrow that indicates that this component generates data and it passes it via this out arrow. If we select the component then you can see there's a number of properties. Properties include how many elements um, that we should include in our output. By default this, this can normally stay at one. Um, where you might need more than one is for things like uh, FFT where you have to process a, a number of chunks at once or for things like um, multiplex, um, for things like interlace and deinterlace, where you want to combine a lot of signals together and then split them apart again. So we'll stay with a buffer size of one. We can select the buffer type. Um, so currently we have an 8-bit, we have two forms of 16-bit and then two forms of 32-bit buffers. We'll stick with the unsigned int. And then you can see for the uh, waveform generator we have various uh, options here. We can change the type of wave and that will update our little icon here on the, on the panel. But let's stick with the sine wave. And for now all we want to do is pass that sine wave um, to an output. So we have uh, an output digital. And this just allows us to collect the value from the DSP buffer chain um, as a, a variable value. You can see it has a property which is connect to, and we're going to connect that to our wave generator. And then you can see it draws a nice little arrow for us, and we can see that the, the two components are now connected. For a DSP system, you would normally have it working or doing its calculations on a regular, um, reliable interval. So to create that interval, I'm going to use a timer interrupt. So if I drag on an interrupt icon, I'm going to enable a timer interrupt. If I go into the properties of that timer interrupt, then I can specify the frequency that we're going to run at. So let's try and increase this frequency a bit. So, so there we have 14, 14 kilohertz. And we'll create a new macro, which is timer interrupt. Okay, and edit. Uh, in our sine wave generator and in a few of the DSP components, you can actually enter in the sample rate under frequency calculation. So if we enter the sample rate of 14 kilohertz, then you can see that based on the properties here, we will end up with a period of about 7.1 uh, milliseconds and a frequency of 140 hertz. Now obviously if I change, say, the number of samples, then this affects the calculations here. And so you can see that depending on your rate of interrupt here, you can you can do a lot of the basic calculations and get everything absolutely on the nose as to what you need. So anyway, inside our interrupt, all we need to do is basically call our DSP components in order. So we'll start with the sine wave and then we'll call the digital output. So the sine wave, we will call generate. 
and for the digital output we will get the value as an int because that's the that's the value that's being stored in the DSP buffer. So we'll assign that to a variable and we'll call this uh, output and what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign that to a PWM output. So drag on a PWM component and then I can set a duty cycle using the value output. Back in my main program I'll enable the PWM and then I'll just have a loop that loops forever. If I um, view the data recorder you can see that every DSP component with an output basically creates a buffer on this um, data recorder window. So when I run the simulation you can see the data. Obviously it's, that's going quite fast um, so what we w probably want to do is find a way to vary the frequency of this sine wave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag on a potentiometer and I'm going to inside my loop here I'm going to read the value of that potentiometer and I'm going to read it as a voltage because that gives me a nice uh, floating point number um, so I'm going to s I'm going to call this um, frequency and I'm going to call the modify frequency um, function of the wave generator modify frequency. So now when I run the program you can see that I can I can turn the frequency right down and I can speed it right up. Now one of the nice things is that I can I can control the amount of range that I get on this potentiometer by adjusting this VREF voltage. So at the moment it goes between 0 and 5. So if I wanted it to go between 0 and 1 then I would change that to be 100 because it's steps of 10 millivolts. And now you can see I'm getting very very nice long slow um, frequency and I can adjust it up to our default maximum rate which is what our rate was in the calculations here. Now obviously there's there's a lot more um, available as part of this uh, DSP library so you could do things like have a second sine wave let's set this to be a, a triangle wave with a 10 samples instead of 100. We can add a math function which basically allows us to combine two DSP streams together in various ways. Um, so our connect to A would be DSP wave gen 1, connect to B would be DSP wave gen 2. Again the buffer size can stay at 1. We want the uh, return value to be an unsigned int. Uh, we want to take the maximum of the two signals and then we just need to change our output to point to our DSP math. Just, just arrange that slightly. And now if we 
go into our timer interrupt, all we have to do is again call these in order. So wave gen 1 generate, wave 10 gen 2 generate, math, calculate, output, set PWM. So if we save and run this, then we've got our sine wave, we've got our triangle wave, zoom in a bit more. That's the sine wave still, set up the triangle. And you can see that we've got the, the two values being added together um, very nicely and providing um, the maximum of the two values. That's not quite taking the whole range. Offset of zero. And there we go. So I hope this has been useful. Um, there's a lot of functionality that we you can achieve using this DSP library. Um, we, as always, if you've got any questions uh, or comments or need new features adding to this DSP library, then um, I'm available on, on the Matrix uh, forums or on the flowcode.co.uk forums. Um, thanks again for watching. I've been Ben Rowland. This has been Flowcode version 9. Goodbye.